Hello and welcome to the demonstrational video on the Swift Select 144 2017 model. Um, we'll just run through the outside things and then we'll, uh, we'll move on to the inside. So starting with the cab then, we have the bonnet release catch is just here for it. Um, so that opens up the bonnet should you need to uh, go under there. We've got the tyre pressures displayed on this panel here but it is worth referring to the actual tyre pressures on the tyres themselves because they do use specialist camping tyres on these that are uh, designed to withstand higher pressures. Uh, in the cab zone here we have the draw across blinds so you pinch those two together like that, draw them together and that's your magnetic strip that joins um, the blind onto this corresponding magnetic strip here. When you're putting this back just make sure it goes back in one smooth movement and they just clip back in. Just make sure that they're clipped in back in properly because as you're cornering they can, if they're not clipped in they can come loose and it'll um, obscure your vision. Same thing happens on the front, just pinch those two together, draw them into the center. It has a little void there that bridges the um, gap there where, that's caused by the uh, rear view mirror. Draw them together into the center and then the corresponding one on the other side has a magnetic strip that joins them together. So that's your blackout blinds for the cab. Underneath the bonnet then, uh, just show you, uh, you're aware, if you need to jump start these, uh, there's a little tab that's revealed just under there. If you put your key into, into that slot there, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but that's the positive side. And then your negative or earth goes onto this tab just here. And that's how you jump start the vehicle. Just be careful uh, when you're doing so, it can, um, you can put too much voltage through it so it's better to put the uh, windscreen wipers on and the um, the windscreen wipers and the, and the blower for the heater it just draws some of the voltage away uh, to avoid voltage surges is, as you're uh, starting the vehicle if you're jump starting it so then we have uh, washer fluid uh, coolant uh, brake fluid your dipsticks down there oil fill So as we make our way around the vehicle then, show you the outside controls. We'll go into the inside last thing, but I might as well show you this while it's here. So you've got your te step control here. In and out for the electric step. Uh, the fly screen is just drawn across here on the sliding door. Uh, the awning is wound out and the winder is just underneath the lounge floor at the back, but the winder goes into there. And then you wind the awning out. There is a separate video on our YouTube website showing you how to operate the awning. The waste water, so everything that goes down the waste tank and uh, down the sink, um, down the sink and down the shower ends up in the waste tank, uh, which this side is the fresh, but on the corresponding side is the waste uh, outlet. Um, so this this is the fresh so it's important that you drain all the water out of the fresh water tank um, if it's going to freeze and you're not using the vehicle get all the water out because it will uh, freeze inside the tank expand and then it can damage the pipe work and, uh, and the tank so it's a simple tap open and close it like so and then the corresponding one is labeled grey uh, it's got a grey tap on it but that's around the other side this is where the boiler is housed on the inside of the vehicle, so um, here you will get the exhaust coming out if you're running the, um, running the uh, boiler on gas. Uh, not so much if you're running on electric, but you will get sort of steam rising up if it's cold temperatures. So that needs to be kept clean and free of debris when the boiler is in use. <clears throat> so as we work around the motorhome then, the boiler on the... so that's where the boiler's housed in here so that's where the the flue was for the boiler um, so the boiler is housed just in there you've got your water pump uh, and uh, pressure regulating diaphragm just there so if you have the pump never ever needs attention that's where it's located you've got your boiler here um, so they're housed obviously the cushions i've taken the cushions off just to show you this 
the boiler here um, is drained. So this is where the boiler is drained. It's very important that the boiler is drained in cold conditions. Again, if water is left in the boiler and it freezes, it will expand, it will crack the boiler. So this tab here is now in the open position. That is in the closed position or usable position. So it needs to look like that before you can run water through the boiler. So what will happen is you'll fill up your tank um, and then you need to close this valve, then run your, your water on the hot side so that it runs through all this pipe work here fills up the boiler and then eventually you'll get a pure flow of water running out of your tap. Until you've got a pure flow of water coming out of your tap then you know that the boiler isn't full. So that's where the safety uh, drain is for the boiler in winter conditions must be closed in order to operate the hot side and indeed the cold side of your water system. So in the lounge area here we have this, there's access to the storage just from the back doors. So that panel lifts up as you can see there, I'll just lift it up, uh, pause the video and lift it up. But in there, there's the carpets and also the winder for the awning. So with that panel lifted up, that's where the carpets are and the winder uh, for the awning. As I say, there's a separate video on how to operate the awning on our YouTube channel. Next locker along, locker along is the gas locker. So it will take two six kilogram bottles um, and then there's a pipe uh, which it doesn't come with but I'll get you one that comes off this regulator a flexible pipe that then goes on to, to the top of your gas bottles and then you switch the gas on on top of your bottles and that it's got an inline regulator which is just there so you we just need a flexible hose to come off that which I'll get you before uh, or on the day that you collect and then so that's where your ha gas bottles are housed and obviously these straps secure those in position so working on around the vehicle then um, this is where the main supply comes into the motorhome so you just need to pull that out and then um, the, your cable, your mains cable clips onto that there's a little lid that lifts up off the cable that corresponds onto this and then that lid just sits onto that little clasp there and that's where the main supply comes into the motorhome so next one along then is the uh, toilet so everything that goes down the toilet ends up in this toilet waste cassette to empty that you're just lifting up this tab here sliding out the cassette uh, if this was to then be full of toilet waste empty it slide that nozzle across unscrew the cap on the end and pour away the liquid which is contained in the uh, cassette as you're doing so press this button here it lets air in as the liquid is going out this uh, container requires chemical to break down the solids and the smells from the toilet waste to fill that you slide this across open up the valve which is just there and then pour the required amount of chemical into here along with a little bit of water to line the bottom give it a swirl round to mix it up and then it's good to go again the cassette has a handle on it and also wheels so that you can wheel it over to the disposal point for ease of use and to put it back in make sure the handle's in that position and then it just slides back into its slot you must make sure that the valve inside the toilet itself is closed but I'll show you that when we go inside so underneath the motor on this side as mentioned is the grey tap which is the wastewater there's an indication inside the motor on the control panel to tell you how full or empty that uh, is or what capacity level your water tanks are at so but that is where the waste water is drained from this is where you fill the fresh water tank it's simply just a hose pipe into this until it pours out obviously make sure that the tap on the other side is closed otherwise it will just pour straight out onto the floor so simply straight hose pipe straight into there until it, it pours out but there is an indication on the control panel to tell you what level that is at. This is just a 12 volt socket if you wanted to pump water from a container onto the floor and you wanted to plug in a submersible pump into that container and then pump it into your tank that's where you would get the power supply. So now that we're in the motor and this is the sliding door um, on the passenger side uh, that's closed. Uh, on the, the blinds inside the motor you're just lifting 
this up to, for the blackout blind and then at the top it's got a fly screen so you can have 50-50 and then they join together by that little clasp there. You want full blackout right up to the top, 50-50 just halfway down and that's the same for all the blinds in the habitation area. Above that we've got the control panel and the heating controls as well. Start with the heating controls to switch that on. You press the button in the middle with a long press. Okay, so the first one we've got flashing here is the motor home heating. So if you make another press on here, you then select your temperature. So that's the temperature of the motor home that you want the heating to be. And then the next one along, if you just you're going around uh, on this dial here, next one along is your hot water. So you've got three options, I think, here. You've got eco, which is 40 degrees, hot, which is 60 degrees, or boost. Boost will take the temperature away from the heating of the motorhome here and divert it to heating your water. So you won't get, if you've got it on boost, you won't get any heat through your, through your motorhome. The next one along um, is the uh, fuel that you want to use. So... You can select gas, obviously you need your gas bottles connected and um, probably uh, purge the system through um, so that you've got a pure flow of water of gas going to your boiler. Mix, so you've got a mix of uh, electric on one kilowatt and gas, a mix of two kilowatt electric and gas, electric only on one kilowatt or electric only on two kilowatts. If you want to come out of any of these menus, you press this back button here. You can select the fan speed if you want to, um, but if you've got the heating on, the, temp the fan will run at a speed which is relevant to the temperature that you've selected here. Next one along is your timing settings, so you can set it to come on at a certain time and go off at a certain time. Next one along is to set your time i'll just make sure that's set correctly for you but that's how you set the time next one along is the settings you shouldn't really need to go into this but there is a separate instruction manual for this but should you need to go into the settings menu that's where that is to switch this off you just press the button in the center and that's your control panel off next one along is the um, main control panel for the whole of the motor and basically it tells you about your levels etc you switch this on and off by the power button just here. Um, you've got a dimmer switch here. You can select the um, brightness of the lights. That selects your lights um, for the vehicle. So that switches your motorhome lights on and off. This is giving you information about the various levels. So water level there you can see is low. Leisure battery, we've got 11.6 volts, but you would expect that because we're not plugged in. Water level low again. So when, when, when you're in this information here, you can select up and down on these buttons here to tell you the various information. So you can go into the system settings there. Again, there is a, there is a manual to explain all this, but... Um, the fridge settings can be operated separately on the fridge, which I'll run through in a second. Um, dimmer level at 100%, internal temperature readout. Um, you can set it to limit the amount of amps that you draw. Uh, tank heaters, you can switch those on and off so that it's a frost protector for the uh, external tanks. You can select which battery you want to use. Um, I would have leisure battery selected because that is the most relevant power source. If you run your leisure battery flat, you can select your engine battery, but if you run that flat, then you're in trouble. Solar panel, we're not drawing anything from that. It's not dark and it's just going dark. It's not lighting and it's just going dark here. Vehicle battery, um, that probably just needs to run for a sec, but when the Valentin team are in it, we'll get it plugged in and uh, get that back up to 12. So that just runs you through your, your readout. So it's telling you about your um, 
levels for your battery, how many amps you're drawing. If your water levels become low, it will bleep at you and tell you that those, uh, those are low. That's telling you that your leisure battery is selected here. Um, it's probably worth going through the uh, instruction manual separately on this, but this little thing here is telling you what your drawer across the battery is here. So hob and sink next to the uh, drawer across door here. Um, when you first put water in it, you do need to run this tap to uh, purge the system. So you'll need to just flick this across to the hot side, wait until you get a pure flow of water coming through here. Then you know all the air is out of the pipes and through the boiler. Same again on the cold side, and then you know all the air is out of the pipes and it's ready to use. Gas hob. Dead straightforward, can't really tell you much about that. The igniter for it is there, um, and then the two controls for it there. So moving on to the fridge, it's a three-way fridge with a digital control panel. It's gonna bleep at me this because we haven't got any power coming into it. Um, so you can select your power source by pressing that button there. So you've got engine battery, that'll only work when the engine's running. Um, gas, obviously you need gas connected for that or uh, mains electric. Again, you need to be connected to mains for that to work. You can also select auto. What, what that'll do then is select the most relevant power source. So it's not found electric, it's looking for gas. If it can't find that, then it'll try and find 12 volt. So if you leave it on auto, no matter what you're doing, if you're driving, plugged in or on gas, that will automatically select the most relevant power source. You can select your own temperature here. If it's a really hot day, you want the fridge to work harder. On a cold day like this, you, do, you only want the fridge set to a, a lower setting. To switch it on and off, it's that button just there. So this being a rear lounge model, uh, to make the bed up in this area here, what you do is you lift the table off that leg and then put it in this gap here to bridge the gap across that section. And then in the wardrobe, just here, these are two panels which are released via that thing there and then they draw across this section to bridge the gap um, further so that it bridges the gap right up to here and then you draw the cushions into the center so you draw that one into the middle lie the backrest flat and that creates your bed at the back the table and those cushions sit on this little lip here which is just underneath the cushion there that's just access through into the storage area which I showed you through the doors at the back and I think there's further access to it from the front there as well. So just in the washroom then, um, if you want to use this as a shower you pull this out and that's your shower head and then it's got a trigger on the end of it. There is a, uh, a catch there that the, uh, the tap itself can go into so you can use it as a proper shower. I would just use it handheld but, um, but you can put it in there if you want to stand underneath it. The toilet, um, so this is uh, connected to the cassette that we looked at outside. The flush for it is just there so you're pressing that and then it flushes around here and it draws its flush from the main water tank. When the, ta when the cassette is full this light will illuminate to tell you that it needs emptying but you can actually see down into that cassette. So the way to use the toilet then is this lever here, slide that across which opens and closes the blade there which is attached to the tank. So open it up, use the toilet, press the flush and then make sure it's closed back up because uh, as you're travelling there'll be liquid in the bottom of that tank which will be sloshing around which you don't want to be uh, cleaning that up if, it's, if you've not closed the valve in there. So this will make a bed here at the front and um, to do that you just press this button down here it releases a catch on the front there and then this section is just drawn forward and it makes a very small bed here at the front this model's fitted with a television aerial which is i'm in the wardrobe here uh, to release that you just unscrew this cap here push that bar up through the roof and then you can maneuver that so that you can um, adjust it to get a better television signal. Just make sure that that's down before you set off otherwise it's a hazard for catching trees etc. So that concludes the demonstrational video. If you've got any questions I'll be happy to answer those on the day that you collect. Uh, if not we'll uh, look forward to seeing you on the day that you collect your new motorhome. <laughs>